So hey y'all and welcome. Welcome back to Lisa's Cottage. What am I doing? <laughs> I am sifting that powder, walnut powder, walnut dirt, walnut dust, walnut, walnut, walnut dust, dirt, whatever it is called that builds up in the bottom of our walnut bags. And I do this each time that I empty my walnut container out here. And then I will give it a good washing, drying, making sure that it's completely dry with no moisture left in it whatsoever. Being that I am opening new bags of the walnut halves and pieces and filling my jar up. So I thought I'd just show you what I was talking about when I tell you I am sifting the walnut dust. And what I do is I just put my walnuts here into a colander, my round one I use, and that's what I get sifted out of the walnuts. I usually take it outside because believe it or not, if I should give this a good shaking and uh, twisting and a turning back and forth, I will get even more out of it. But for some reason it just drives me bananas to see that built up in the bottom of the container here that I hold my walnuts in. So that's what I'm doing right now. So how did my doctor's appointment go yesterday? Really, really he well. Said, he said, I can go back in and we can take more out. Or option two, we can just uh, add that in to the treatments that you're doing to your hands and arms. I said, hey, let's just add that to the treatment. We will just focus on making that part of this um, treatment that I'm doing with my hands and arms. And he's game all game for it all for it cleared it and and he said um, they look like they were healing up really well I had a wee bit of allergic reaction uh, the one on my tummy when they took the sutures out every now and then I can have a slight allergic reaction to antibiotic and um, uh, like Neosporin so she put some Neosporin on the bandage that she put over and she put the antibiotic cream on the bandage. Um, and when she said she was putting Neosporin on it, I should have said, oh, sometimes I have allergic reaction to Neosporin that uh, my surgeon just, my surgeon in the past has always told me, don't do the Neosporin, just use Vaseline on top of your bandage and that way it'll prevent your bandage sticking to the incision place or the wound. So my doctor said yesterday, yes, use Vaseline and no, don't use Neosporin. Now for my hands and arms, he said he, he thought they were doing really well. He was just completely surprised that like my upper part of my arm, not the underneath or in the bend, that's where I'm getting a really good reaction going or where uh, a lot of hidden cancer cells were that I had no idea that I was having any issue in those areas. He said the same thing. No, there were no visible issues uh, in the bends of your arms or actually where you are reacting the most. He said there were no visible signs of any issues. And he thought too, it was kind of strange that my um, the tops of my arms is getting very little to, or very little to no reaction. And I asked him, I said, do you think that might be from the blue light treatments that I've had in the past? I've had two blue light treatments. And what that is, I would go into my dermatologist and one of the nurses would apply this light um, chemical that would be like a uh, chemotherapy. She would apply it to uh, my hands, between my fingers, all around my nails, all up my arm, all the way up to my shoulder. And then you go back in the following day I'm thinking 24 hours later and then they put you under these blue lights it was I want to say 14 minutes um, you sit under those blue lights and you when you go home after they've applied the uh, chemical you're not supposed to be outside even to the point if it's sunny on the day that you have it applied you're supposed to wear gloves and long sleeves on your trip home and if you need to go anywhere in between you are supposed to wear gloves and long sleeves and pretty thick long sleeves. Not even sit next to windows. If you have a lot of windows in your home, 
close the blinds so there's no risk of sun coming through while you have that chemical on your arm and absolutely no bathing or washing it off. Um, that's what it's for, it's to sit there for 24 hours without being disturbed and then you go back in and sit under the light. Again, I think it was like 14 minutes. Uh, I know it's definitely under 30 minutes, I definitely know that. And it can be kind of painful. It feels like someone's taking a millions and zillions of rubber bands and popping you. Just pop, pop, pop one right after the other and they're all doing it at the same time. That's what it feels like on your arms while you're sitting under that blue light treatment. I had two of those blue light treatments, not back to back. I had one and then they spaced it out a few, several months and then I had another round. So I asked him, do you think maybe the blue light treatments did help with that part of my arm being that when I sat there, my, uh, like where I'm getting the reaction right now would have been laying on the surface. So that didn't get as much of the blue light uh, right down on it the way the top parts of my arms is. He said, well, that may be why you're not having, you know, little to no reaction on the top parts of your arms and just underneath in the bends and the forearms that you are. So we're just kind of thinking maybe the blue light treatment did help, even though we didn't think it did help. So that's just kind of what we're thinking right now. He said he's not seen a case like mine where there's not much, either very little to no reaction on the top parts of the arms. Usually, he said, usually that is the area that gets um, affected most by the sun because it's the one that's exposed to the sun the most. And his patients in the past that are going through the treatments that I'm going through or that he has seen. So saying all that, he said, everything looks good. We're just gonna start treating that area at the same time that I uh, continue to treat my arms. He wants me to continue on, which we knew that it was extended. And after seeing it yesterday, he wants it. Uh, he, he still feels, he still wants it extended until he said, until it crusts over or until that all turns to scabs. So it looks like we're kind of getting there with the scabbing and the crusting. So maybe we won't have to go a complete four weeks. Maybe we will, I don't know. I go back to see him again in a month, a month from yesterday. So that was my doctor's appointment yesterday. I'm gonna continue sifting my walnuts and get them put in the container and put away. But I seen a thing the other day that someone was sharing tips and I can't remember who it was, but it was on YouTube. And they were giving like life hack to life tips and one of them was when you get to the bottom of the bag of your cereal and you have like that powder at the bottom and you can't stand it in your cereal bowl, said take the last of what's in the bag and sift the cereal with a colander, um, like sift it over a plate like I've done here, or sift it over a garbage can. That way you won't have all that powder in the bottom of your cereal bowl. So my question would be, do you eat salt, sugar, or nothing on your fresh grapefruit. And uh, part B of this question, let's make it two parts, an A and a B. B, do you eat salt on any kind of fruit? So I thought I would take you down and show something to you. And it's been so long since I've stepped out to put my, I call them rubbers, my rubber boots on. I had to make sure that there were no spiders or snakes hiding in them. So I'm gonna take you on a little tour. Hopefully it won't turn into a two hour tour. I'm trying to see if it's raining. Of course, this will be a lot better come spring and summer. It's gonna be fun to bring you all outside with me. Can you see the patches of green coming through? The ground's squishy.
hear the water. So the creek or the river or both may be up. We are under flood warnings until Sunday. Look! Look! Aren't they cute? These are wild daffodils. However, we did gather them from the woods a couple years back and put them in the circle here. And just goes around the tree. I think this is where I'm gonna wrap this video up for today so I can start getting it ready for you all to go live tomorrow. I uh, wasn't a whole lot of stuff going on. Um, but I wanted to bring you uh, into parts of my day today and I wanted to take you down and show you the wild daffodils buttercup. But this is where I'm going to wrap this up today and thank you for hanging out with me. Um, again, I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, thank you for allowing me to come into your homes and your lives. And I want to say welcome to all the new subscribers that have uh, come over from um, one of the other creative creators of YouTube that participated in the DIY floral challenge. Welcome. I hope that you will stick around. And if you've not already subscribed, I would ask if you would consider subscribing to Lisa's Cottage and joining our uh, community here. So if you would hit the like button, subscribe if you've not, and comment below. I would absolutely appreciate it. Until we meet again, you all take good care and bye-bye.